Skinamarink is directed by Kyle Edward Ball and is in theaters for a few days this weekend and could go for even longer. I mean, look at what Terrifier 2 accomplished. Who knows how long it'll be in theaters, but it's also coming to Shudder very soon. And the IMDb plot synopsis reads, Two children wake up in the middle of the night to find their father is missing and all the windows and doors in their home have vanished which is probably the best and most simple way of giving this movie a log line because I just saw it in theaters. I went to a theater about 20 minutes from my house and had a fairly full audience actually for what is a very experimental film. This movie does things that I've never really seen in a theater before and so many things that I wanna talk about. The number one thing that I'm so excited about is that I truly thought the days of the Blair Witch Project and paranormal activity were over. I did not think we'd see another movie shot for $15,000, like this movie was, in a theater that will absolutely make a profit, without a doubt. I really thought those days were long behind us. I didn't know if another filmmaker would ever crack the code to finding another way to make a very, very cheap movie that actually ends up in theaters that a lot of people are talking about. I mean, everybody's talking about this movie in the horror community, and I think that's very exciting. It's very inspirational, and I love that I got to go to a theater to watch a movie that was shot for what some people buy a car for. I really just thought those days were behind us, and I'm glad that I was wrong. As I said, the film is very experimental. It's about 100 minutes of shots of a house. You get some obscure dialogue from two children. He denies you so many standard things that you're given in every movie, like a close-up of an actor, for instance. You don't get that. I have no idea what these kids look like. I don't know what their parents look like. And it's not like an E.T. thing where the adults are kept off screen. You don't see the kids either. You'll occasionally see them from like knee down, walking around the house, or maybe the camera's behind them and they're sitting and you can just see their shoulders. But you don't get a sense of who these characters are. They're just two very young children who are scared and the TV's on at night playing very old cartoons that are in the public domain as the opening titles tell us. For the most part, every shot in the movie is low angle. The camera might be on the floor from the perspective of a child or an infant. There are tons and tons of shots of hallways and walls, dark closets, Legos on the ground, carpet, the couch, and everything is either purposefully underexposed or overexposed. This movie is essentially what the creepypasta craze is. And it's the first movie that I've ever seen actually do it right. And I have a lot to say about this because I know that there will be plenty of people who do not like this movie. It is not mainstream. It's experimental. It's not conventional in any way. It doesn't have a driving force of a narrative, really. And there will be people who go to this movie expecting something that feels very much from A to Z, like a normal movie, and they're not gonna get that, and it's gonna piss them off. And there will be people who also laugh at the movie and think it's just so fucking hilarious, and how can anyone be scared by it? But what I see is someone who's really hungry to make movies, who did everything he could to make a movie, even if it was just setting up shots in a house and trying to tell a compelling story with something that's going on, and I think he did a really good job with what he was given. When it comes to movies that are based off of internet horror stories and creepy pastas, or films that are clearly inspired by those things, it's a pretty tough sell. Most of the ones I've seen, if not all, weren't really for me. And there's a lot of mistakes that I thought were made with those characters in those films. Most of them are very high gloss entertainment, shot for a lot of money and aimed at teens, PG-13. When it comes to the most successful creepypastas that I've seen, there's something I've noticed about all of them. And I have a very unique story that I will quickly tell to kind of drive this point home. I've never talked about this because it's unorthodox to do so, but uh, a while back, I was given the opportunity to pitch an idea to a studio that had the rights to a specific creepypasta character. And they asked me to pitch them what I would do with it. And I took some time and I thought about it. And I said, look, um, all these characters work because they're almost always shown in a lo-fi way, whether it's a blurry photograph or something that's out of focus in the background, or you can't quite see it, or it's an audio file that's strange or creepy. You never get great looks at any of these guys, because if you did, 
it would lose all of the fright factor. There's something very analog about almost every creepypasta. And so I pitched that the movie had to be shot as if it was on VHS. I said it had to be rated R because of the nature of the character they had the IP of. This character does very violent things. And I was like, you can't water that down. And you should pretty much shoot it almost entirely in like an old warehouse. And I pitched what I thought was a pretty good idea for it. And they weren't into it. I think they were probably looking for more of the high gloss route, which is what so many of these movies have done wrong. Skinamarink clearly is inspired by internet horror and creepypastas. And it's exactly what should be done. The audio is so purposefully bad that there's subtitles for a lot of the dialogue. The image looks like a cross between VHS, mini DV tape, and an old deteriorated film reel. And as already stated, the lighting is so purposefully underexposed or overexposed most of the time that you're in a constant state of wondering what exactly you're looking at. And that's one of the scariest things about the movie for me. Yes, it is a little bit too long. I think that there's a really good 80 minute version of this. Yes, there's excessive use of the same angle over and over and over. There is a somewhat confusing narrative that you don't always understand, but that's part of the fun of it. And I have to go back to the fact that this is just like a movie made by somebody who is super hungry for like next to nothing when it comes to feature film budgets. And the fact that it's in theaters and I just paid for a ticket to go watch it is so goddamn inspirational. Fact of the matter is, irregardless of whether or not you find enjoyment in Skinamarink or see something in it that, you know, scares you or you think it's just funny or it's boring, things like this just don't really happen anymore when it comes to making such a low budget film and getting it into theaters. And I gotta say, I feel a major sense of pride as a horror fan that the three biggest examples of this are all horror movies. I think that is so cool. And I am so excited for, for this year in horror and the fact that comic book movies and horror movies are keeping the theatrical industry alive. I think that is so great that as a genre and all of the subgenres within it, it continues to prove to be this endless sea of creativity. So guys, if you're into the idea of a very lo-fi movie that is super experimental, that does have some scary moments, and seeing that on the big screen with an audience that is probably gonna be like, what the fuck am I watching? I think that it's gonna be an experience you won't forget. Whether you like it or not, I remember seeing Paranormal Activity and Blair Witch Project for the first time. And I do think that all of them, despite what you may or may not like about it, I've never forgotten those moments. They do feel like little mini cultural touchstones in the horror genre. And I do think that despite whether or not you find yourself liking or disliking this movie, you're gonna remember watching it for the first time. Guys, thank you so much as always for watching. Look forward to more videos very soon. And if you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.